we're now going to begin our discussion of methods in earnest now. Let's first figure out how we can discover the minimum value. So to find the minimum value in this tree, the way I could do that would be if I go to the left and then go to the left. Once I run out of places to go to the left, I'm always going to be looking at values greater than the thing I was just at. That is how a binary search tree works. Therefore, the minimum value is always the leftmost node. And conversely, the maximum value must always be the rightmost node. So th those should be some relatively easy methods. Let's see how we implement those. Here's treeman. It is really one line if you were clever with your curly braces. We have while the left thing isn't nil, we go left. And then we should re probably return that value somewhere. So return x should go there. I apologize for the typo in the code. Tree maximum is the exact same thing, presumably with the exact same typo. You bet it's not there. So return x as well. That is how we can find the minimum and maximum value. And just like we saw with our search method, we can analyze these in the exact same way. What is the, what, what is the worst thing that could happen? It is that we would need to go all the way down, which we roughly had to on the right here. We missed by one, but that's okay. So both of these algorithms are going to be in theta of h, because we are always descending the tree by one level, and we're only ever considering one node as we do it. We aren't considering all of the children. So for example, our in order walk method had to consider both children and we descended the whole tree, therefore it depended on the number of nodes and not the height. In these methods, we are only considering one of the children and always descending the tree, therefore we will depend only upon the height and not necessarily upon the number of nodes. Having discussed the minimum and maximum, let's discuss how we can order the rest of the elements. We have a sort of strange thing here where we talk about the in order sequence or in order representation of these things. If I have a binary search tree displayed like the one up there, then the, we can say some things about these nodes VI, VJ, and VK. So we know that because VI is in the left subtree over here, that VI must be in some sense less than or equal to VJ. Notice VI and VJ here are corresponding to nodes, not to the values. That's why I'm using this strange sort of less than or equal to that's curved. It's a new binary relation I'm describing. On, uh, it's a comparator to compare nodes in the tree. Similarly, because VK is in the right subtree of VJ, it must be that VJ is less than or equal to VK. With this less than or equal to meaning a bit of a strange thing, there's different ways you could call it. The This is just some symbol to compare them. And the nice thing that's important here is that this is transitive because VI is less than or equal to VJ and VJ is less than or equal to VK. We have that they are in a transitive relationship. So VI is less than or equal to VK. That is a very nice thing. Now, let's see if we can use that to write the correct order of a set of vertices. So. Here is a tree. I want you guys to try and write down the correct order of these vertices without even knowing their values. We should be able to do that because of the nature of a binary search tree. I'm again going to be filibustering here because I want to make sure that you guys actually pause the video and try this on your own to hopefully get a bit of practice at it. I'm bored of talking now, so I'm going to try and work through this. So we have the minimum value I know is V1. And then if I am following my idea, I know that V2 must be bigger than it. And in fact, nothing else can be between those two values because everything above it is going to be greater than it and everything to the right of it is going to be greater than it. So the next value is going to be V3. And that's because V3 must lie between V4 and V2 because it is in the left subtree of V4. And then we have V4 because everything above it and to the right of it is going to be greater than it. And then I know that these three values are between V4 and V8 and that the smallest of them is going to be V5 because there's nothing in its left subtree. And then V7 is bigger than V6. And then everything to the right of V8 is bigger than it. And then we have V9. Why do we have V9? Let's actually figure that out. Well, everything over here is greater. 
I need want to find the next smallest, so I'm going to have to go left over to here and then over to here to find the smallest value over there. That's going to be V9. And then I want to find the next smallest. If I look, everything over here and up everything over here and up there is going to be greater than V10. So we have V10. And then the values V11 and V12 must be between V10 and V13. V11 is the smaller of the two, V12, then V13, then V14. Notice, something really convenient happened here. Because of the way I drew this tree, each of these values was actually in the correct order if I just drew a line down to where they were. If I projected the entire tree downwards, they would be in the correct order because we are always just looking for the next rightmost node in this sort of drawing scheme that I use here. That's kind of convenient. If you want to, I left another example for you guys to practice on, but you don't need to. Related problem to this is what is the successor of a node? If we scroll down, the successor is the next node in the in order sequence. So here for V13, the successor would be V2. Here for V4, its successor would be V10. How on earth could we do this though? Because it's a little strange. Let's check some of the examples we have here. So. V7's successor is its parent. V6's successor is its right child. V2's successor is V3. But V3's successor is uh, V12? That's not its parent, it's its parent, grandparent, great grandparent? Uh, that's not great. So let's try and narrow these down. Let's find out what we are doing. Let's find, for example, the successor of V12 and reason our way through this. I went in, what the successor of V12 was, was V11. V11 was special because it was the minimum value on the right. If we can go to the right, the successor is going to be the minimum thing over there. That is one of our cases. What if I can't go to the right, like over here? Well, I need to find the next largest value. So in order to do that, I'm going to have to go up the tree. And I'm hoping that the value that I go up to is greater than what I am. So for example, over here at V4, if I go, go up, V8 is less than V4, so it cannot be its successor. So what I'm hoping is to go up and to the right. So we have two cases we need to consider. Let's look at them with some numerical values to make it a little bit easier to see what's happening. Let's look at this tree. It's the exact same tree I had above, but I've now given us numerical values to the nodes. So what is the next biggest value after nine? Looking at the tree, that's 13. What is the next biggest value after 26? Well, that's going to be, I need to go up. That's not bigger, that's not bigger. 29 is bigger. So. The successor of 26 is 29. The su successor of 15 is 19, which I had to go to the right and then all the way to the left. So let's look at our two cases. There is a typo here. I will tell you guys right now. So I'm gonna comment on it to make sure that we fix it, which is that this should say that X is in the left subtree of Y. I apologize for that. So make sure you update your notes to say that. I will update the outline at some point to reflect that, but you should make sure to, that your notes read correctly. So are two cases. If I can go to the right, then I find the minimum over there. If I cannot go to the right, I go up until I do go to the right, which is saying that I need to find what am I in the left subtree of, which reads a little awkward there. So let's look at this code for successor. For successor, if x dot right isn't nil, if I can go to the right, find the minimum over there. And then if that I can't do that, then what am I going to do? I'm going to find my parent and then while I'm not going to the right, so while I'm going to the left, we are going to keep looping. So while I'm not nil, so I can still work my way up and while I am Still in the right subtree, I want to be in the left subtree. So for example, in this code up here, while I am still in the right subtree, I need to keep going up. 
and then eventually I will return. So let's actually walk through this example and find the successor of this really problematic node here, 26. So I'm finding the successor of X and Y is the parent of X. So let's zoom in. This is going to be X and then Y will be the parent of X. Now let's check what the code is telling us to do. The code said, while y isn't nil, it's not, and while x is equal to y dot right, x is equal to y dot right, so we have to keep going. Now, I'm going to update, let's double check, x is going to become y, so I'm going to get rid of x and move it up here. Notice y is still there, I'm not replacing y, I'm just setting it equal to the same thing, and then y becomes y dot parent. So then y will move up to here. I probably should be more careful with xing this out, so I'm going to just cross it out once. Let's draw it again and cross it out just once. Now we need to check, is x equal to y dot right? Yes, and y isn't nil. So I need to sw update them again. So I'm going to get rid of x, put it up here, get rid of y, put it up there. Is x equal to y dot right? No, therefore y must be the successor. But if you scroll down to the code, we need to be a bit careful. We Is it actually going to be y? Yes it is, because I'm updating the parent and then performing the check. Depending on how you implement this loop, you may need to be more cautious there. So this is our idea of successor. You could also just as easily define a predecessor, which is the opposite of the successor. It is the previous node. I may leave that as an option to give you as a homework problem if I want to, to figure out how you can code these things on your own.